Now, let me just jump into now the work we did with the Keck Medical School Center at USC. Here, our client was actually the University of Southern California, and we looked at neurodegenerative diseases. And what we were building was a systems architecture, the parasites, astrocytes, and endothelial cells. So let me explain this. What is the blood-brain barrier? If you were to think about your brain as consisting of neurons, which are the components, the nerve, the brain cells, and astrocytes, there's all these different types of brain cells in your brain. Okay, so let's assume you call that the brain. All right, these interconnected set of brain cells. All right, so that's your brain here. But remember, your brain can't just, your brain cells can't just be there. They have to be fed nourishment. They need to be, ha have the ability to remove toxins. So it's an engine that's running, right? Think about the brain as an engine that's running. It needs to be fed with nutrients, blood and other nutrients. And you need to have the ability to remove toxins. All right, so just think about it that simply. All right, so what does that? What does that is called the blood brain brain barrier, okay? The blood-brain barrier is known as the vasculature. We discussed a few days ago the cardiovascular system, okay? And we talked about the arteries and the veins and the capillaries and all these things that feed, that start from your heart and go throughout your entire body. There is a vasculature, a system that supports blood into your brain and removes toxins. That's called the blood-brain barrier, okay? So what is the blood-brain barrier composed of? So if you took a microscope and so if here your brain and you thought about in a very simplistic way a helmet sort of surrounding the brain considered that helmet to be the blood brain barrier and if you looked microscopically at that helmet you would see it composed of like spaghetti like things the vasculature okay which is all the capillaries that feed blood and can remove toxins out the vasculature in the brain is known as a neurovascular unit we're going to look at that but just to give you an idea of how extensive this vasculature is if if you took all the elements of your blood brain barrier and you literally stretched it out, it would go from San Francisco to Los Angeles. Okay, pretty long. So, all of that stuff is compacted into your brain just to give you the level of sophistication that nature has done. Now, the neurovascular unit, let me show you a picture of it, is this anatomical unit shown in diagram A here. And this is in, in one of the papers we published. And what you see here, so consider the green here and the sort of the aqua here as your brain. These are elements of the brain, the neuronal unit, okay? The astrocytes and the neuron. So think about this over here as a, you're microscopically looking at an element of the brain. And here is the vascular. So it's a neurovascular unit. This is a neural part and this is a vascular part. So this, we're looking at a cross section. This tan piece here is, remember if you remembered in a couple of videos ago, we talked about the capillary. So this is a capillary inside the gray areas where blood flows through. The base of this capillary system is made up of an endothelial cell. So this is an endothelial cell right here, okay? And blood flows through here. And this is the astrocytes and neuron, but there's a very, very, very important piece of the anatomy here known as a pericytes, peri, P-E-R-I, site, C-Y-T-E. Okay, you may want to write this down, okay? The pericyte is this pink structure. Guess what this does? It's almost like a valve. So if blood is flowing in here, it decides how much blood is going to go in here. And if you have toxins building up here, it's a thing that takes the toxins out, okay? So quick summary. So the pericytes, here's the endothelia where blood is flowing flowing through, okay? Your brain's over here. The parasites are determining blood flow, clean blood into the brain, and are also determining what can pass into the brain and what toxins you take out. So obviously you wanna be able to feed the brain with nutrients, but you also wanna be able to remove toxins. So what happens if the parasites break down, which is what people call the breakdown in the blood-brain barrier? And so if you look over here, if we go here, we're looking at a lateral view of it. So here's again, see these are the endothelial right here making up the blood-brain barrier, okay? Blood is flowing through here. These are the parasites up here. And the blood-brain integrity, can, if it's destroyed, which means these parasites here start breaking down, then guess what happens? Garbage is not removed and you don't get blood flowing in. It's not a good thing. So Betsa Zilkovich at USC had come, and others had come to the conclusion that when the blood-brain barrier here, which is this parasite's very specific breaks down, it gets destroyed, guess what? You're going to have a serious problem with your blood-brain barrier. 
okay? It's basically breaking down. So imagine the parasites represent like the bricks in a wall. And when those bricks start getting holes poked in them and they start deteriorating, all sorts of stuff can come into your brain, but you're also not able to remove toxins, okay? Very, very important stuff, parasites, okay? So you can impress your own neuroscientist or your neurologist or if you meet a medical student with this, okay? So this was a theory. Now, what had not been done is to really understanding the systems mechanisms. And that's where Cytosov and our collaborative work came in. Melanie Sweeney, who was a postdoc, Baroslav Zilkovich, who was the other, my co-PI on this, okay? So what we did was using Cytosolve, we went to the structure of, this is the endothelial, which you're seeing here. And remember, there's these have all different molecular reactions going on in there. And this is the parasites, and this is the astrocytes, the green, okay? So really three structures. This is called the neurovascular unit, the parasites, the endothelial, and the green, the astrocytes. So what we did was we looked at all the literature out there, and yeah, it's not parasites, it's parasites, okay? Not parasites, okay? Big, big difference. Thank you. Thank you. Let's, Eddie Chua says, yes, parasites sites, not parasites. Thank you, Eddie. So what we did was we looked at all the research out there and we organized it to look at all the molecular systems in the endothelial, all the molecular system, the parasites, and all the molecular system, the astrocytes. And the goal was, could we, as the architects looking at it, could we come up with the architecture that could explain many of these diseases? Okay. All right. And by the way, we'll talk about this a little more. The destruction of the parasites, there's a growing body of evidence that this destruction in the blood-brain barrier, guess what causes it? Likely toxins, it could be some of it could be genetic, some of it could be food you eat, and likely toxins in the environment, plastics, right? Heavy metals, all this kind of stuff. So these things literally are poking holes and destroying the parasites. And when this breaks down, you're hurting your blood-brain barrier, you're breaking down the wall, quote unquote, the wall in your body, okay? All right, yeah, thanks, Eddie. Eddie says it's a homophone. Please don't con confuse parasites with parasites, okay? All right, thank you. So. So what we did was we did that analysis. So we looked at the endothelial here, okay, which is this piece right here, and we mapped out all those molecular pathways. Now, I'm not going to go into detail, but every piece of word here is a molecule. The line is a molecular reaction. You can see there's a bunch of molecular reactions going on in this structure laterally here and this structure here. So in the endothelial, we mapped out all these molecular systems. So you notice where, this is why we say we take a systems approach, we're understanding all the interconnections. Now, all of this individual research have been done by others. So the problem in biology or neuroscience or any of the biological sciences is people get incentivized to find one little thing. And you could win a Nobel Prize just for finding this little piece of reaction right here, okay? Or this, or this. But putting all of this together, there's really not a lot of awards given for that because it's a grueling job. But that's what we've done here. We've organized all the molecular pathways within the endothelial, okay? All right. Then, going again, going back to this anatomy here, we did this, and then we went to the parasites, which is the structure here, okay? So the endothelial is here, and then you have the parasites here. Again, all of these molecular reactions are coming from experiments that people have done. So we don't need to kill animals because we already are looking at work that's been done. Let me just... By the way, I'd like to share our stuff here. Let me knock this out here. Okay, because I want, obviously, you guys to learn systems, and I have a little banner running below here. So please go to vashiva.com slash join. Your support of that, your signing up supports you and also supports us to be able to do this kind of great work here. So what we have here, we've mapped out all the molecular pathways of the endothelial, all the molecular pathways of the parasites, and no one had done this before. So anatomically, we've mapped out these pathways in this, and then we look at the astrocytes, which is really representing the brain and how it, it interconnects to the parasite. All right. So what we did was using the cytosol approach, working with collaborators at USC, we mapped out literally the neurovascular unit, all the molecular reactions in the endothelial, which is the cell that feeds the thing that contains the blood brain barrier where blood flows through. We then mapped out all the molecular pathways in the parasites and the astrocytes. So we could have just done that and walked away. But a systems approach, when you think systems, you're trying to interconnect all of this so you can see the whole. Again, I can't overemphasize a systems approach is what is needed in the modern world. And you can apply this to neuroscience, you can apply it to your body, you can apply it to politics, you can apply it to everything. So one of the biggest contributions that really came from our efforts, my efforts, and Cytosolve's efforts were this. Here is the anatomy. So what we did was we literally laid it out like a architecture. And there it is. And I'll come back to this. So what do I mean by architecture? If you build software, 
if you're a construction person, you'll typically know, notice that the building of software, the building of any engineering system is done in layers. You build the foundation of a building and then you put the plumbing and the electricity and that's like the middleware layer. And maybe even you put in the cat five or the cat six, right? All the communications. And then you finish up with the interior design. In software, you do the same thing. You build a data layer, then you build a communications layer. It's called the application layer. And then you build a user interface. So that's the same thinking I approached to this problem. And by the way, academics don't think like this. When I put this together and we submitted this paper to one of the leading journals in the world, half of the reviewers thought it was a brilliant paper and the other half had never heard of the word systems architecture. So think about this. And they made all sorts of critiques about the paper, very nasty remarks. And I had to explain to them what is a systems architecture. And then uh, I'll show you the success we had. But anyway, this is a systems architecture. Okay, let me make it a little bit bigger. But what you can see here is the foundation layer is a neurovascular unit, it's the anatomy. So here's the endothelial, and we mapped out all the different molecular pathways. In fact, we modularize them. So that's what these little pieces are here on the left. It's a little bit hard to see. And here's the parasites, and here's the astrocytes. So just think about this contribution itself. It was the first time anyone had really mapped out all the molecular pathways. But we took it one step further. From an engineering systems approach, we said, okay, here is a neurovascular unit. But then we found out that the endothelial and the parasites, they communicate almost like this is like their communications infrastructure, their internet. They use one, two, three, four, five, six major subsystems to communicate between each other. MFS D2A, Notch, TGF Beta, TGF Beta R2, VEGF, A VEGF R2, ANG, TI2, PDGF B, VB, PDGF FR Beta. Now, what are these? These are basically subsystems of communication. And similarly between the parasites and the astrocytes, there were two major subsystems. So think about this as a middleware layer, as a piping, as the communications layer between these anatomical subsystems. But here is a really cool thing. All right, so we understood the anatomy, we mapped out all the molecular pathways, and then we understood the communications between the subsystems. But now to make it practical to people and clinically valid, we looked at all the different diseases that are out there that you hear people, horrible diseases people talk about, Alzheimer's, right? And ALS and brain cancer and hypoxia and micro cephaly or ischemic stroke. There's a bunch of them. All these diseases were always being viewed in a reductionist way, like the blind man touching the elephant. Okay, someone just studies Alzheimer's, someone else just studies Parkinson's, someone else just studies ALS and so on. This is this siloed reductionism that occurs in academic research. It occurs in medicine. This is why people don't see the interconnections of these diseases. They label these diseases and it's very lucrative to label diseases because what you can do then is you can design drugs for individuals diseases and you don't have to look at prevention. What you see here is all of these diseases we mapped out and then we related it to this second communications layer. And you find out these diseases are actually breakdowns in the communications between the endothelial and the parasites and the parasites and the astrocytes. So for example, here's ALS right here. Here's Alzheimer's. So if you follow this through, you find out it's a breakdown, Alzheimer's and ALS in the PDGF, BB, PDGFR beta pathway, which interconnects the endothelial and the parasites. So anatomically, what we've been able to understand here is that when the endothelial cell and parasite signaling is broken down, that's when you get ALS and Alzheimer's. I hope this is valuable. So basically, this thing becomes a very powerful map that helps researchers, okay? And it becomes, it's almost like we've mapped the world in some ways, okay? We've mapped these anatomical structures and we're able to use this to now, we're gonna be taking to the next level with cytosol we can start modeling these, figuring out how particular things can break down the blood-brain barrier and what are things that can prevent and support the blood-brain barrier, like turmeric. We've talked about this. Curcumin is very powerful at protection of the blood-brain barrier. People have known this, but how and why does this do this? We can use this mapping to understand. So really the big takeaway is the blood-brain barrier is a very powerful aspect of brain health. So things that sustain your blood-brain barrier, support it, keeping it functioning well, will lead to brain health. Things that destroy your blood-brain barrier, certain foods, certain toxins in the environment, even particularly different kinds of bacteria and viruses, okay, that can cross the blood-brain barrier. One of the things people talk about is spirochetes, okay? The Lyme bacteria, which is a 
spirochete, which sort of can drill its way here and cause some serious problems. So and that takeaway that you want to think about is that this anatomical structure, let me go back to this, is critical. And if the parasites break down, and parasites can help break potentially affect this, you have, this is a thing that leads to these diseases, okay? This becomes a map. Now, when we did this research and we submitted it, by the way, journals in science are rated at different levels. The Academy Awards of Journals is a journal called Nature. So we submitted this work to Nature and half of the reviewers thought it was brilliant and the other half, and these are the leading scientists in the world to review this, and the other half, as I mentioned, didn't understand the word engineering systems architecture, which is a term that I'd used. So I had to write about a 20-page response really educating these leading neuroscientists, what is a systems architecture? This is how backward and ignorant their knowledge was. Fortunately, these guys were open and the paper got published. And you can see it here. We're very proud of this. Myself and Betsa Bereslav were the senior authors, typically, and Melanie was the first author as she was a postdoc here, okay? But this got published. It's gotten, I think, over nearly 700 citations in science. One of the biggest things is who cites your work, it validates your work, okay? 